And the information I have is they go to some of the mortuaries, compromise the workers there, people even who died of uh, some illness, people who died maybe out of a, an accident or other causes, they take photographs of such bodies and blame on police. Today's video was sponsored by Luca Karimi and Anthony Mbudia. These are true patriots and Kenyan nationalists at heart. I have noticed that ever since Raila released the Azimio delegation to represent them in the bipartisan discussions, Jeremiah Kioni and Martha Karua along with the rest of the Mlima Kenya crew have been hanging together as a block. Even in this image you can see they were holding some form of press conference, not the first of its kind, this is the third one since this list was released. Now that makes me wonder, what happened? What went wrong? In the past we used to see the odd Eugene Wamalwa there, George Wajakoya somewhere in the back, now it's an all-out Mount Kenya affair each and every time I see them holding a mshemani or a press conference. Now why is that the case? The first reason is posturing. Because in politics, it's all about numbers. The more MPs you have, the more power you have over the events of the National Assembly. And the more information you have, the more leverage you have over practically any other human being that you're faced with. And so when you see Martha Karua, Jeremiah Kioni, Mainan Jenga, Munya, and all these other Gema community leaders bandwagoning together, it is a show of might. Now who exactly are they trying to impress with their tyranny of numbers? A one Mr. Raila Odinga. So that in the event he thinks of betraying them he'd better think twice and so far this posturing has paid off by now we know that all along what they wanted was a seat on the table in fact Martha Karua was pushing to have Eugene Wamalwa removed and replaced with somebody from Lima Kenya so a seat on the table is what they always wanted and so they went back to the drawing board and they found a method that they can arrive at the table what method am I talking about Jeremiah Kioni has officially been appointed as the head of the legal and technical team which is to support the joint dialogue between Kenya Kwanzaa and Azimio so their primary task is to give legal advice to the Azimio side. And that to me is a very good indicator that these talks are going nowhere. Quite literally, nowhere. Whoever said too many cooks spoil the broth was no idiot. There's five people seated on that table. There's another legal team which is being headed by Jeremiah Kioni. We don't even know how big this team is. It could have even accounted for people like Makau Mutua. Why can't they just trust Kalonzo Musioka? Kalonzo is a lawyer, a lawyer who is in fact able to practice his craft at the Supreme Court. That is not a privilege that every other lawyer who graduates gets. It's something you earn over time or through knowing the right people. So for me, this need to create a legal team to advise Kalonzo Musioka, who is the delegation leader, looks more like overreach. And they're not going to find any favorable outcome if this is the kind of things they're going to be doing. All those people there should be reporting to Kalonzo Musioka. Done. That's it. Now Kalonzo Musioka has to compile what has happened, go back, talk to Kioni, who talks to Karua, who talks to Maina Njenga, and all these people, then they tell him what he ought to say back. In Kenya Kwanza, Kimani Ishungwa has all the free space to do what he wants. If he wants to say the talks are off, they're off. If he says we meet at Serena, we meet at a public school, it's his decision. There's no one coaching him or teaching him on what to say other than his other four members. And the two reasons why Kioni has decided to form this legal team is because, number one, it's the only way they'll know for sure what is happening in those discussions. They don't seem to trust anyone. And number two, they want to introduce personal issues. This is a man who believes he's the Secretary General of Jubilee. He cannot agree those people to leave that table without Jubilee having been discussed, its interests protected, and then now he can allow them to move on to other matters. And now back on to the main matter of this video. Why are these Mlima Kenya leaders bandwagoning together? The last and final reason is that these people are putting a unified front to show Raila Odinga that if he messes, they will abandon him. And these are not just anybody's. These are people who have been with Raila Odinga from August 9 till date. All the heinous things they've been doing, they know about it. In fact, there's one which the IG has just exposed the other day, that some Azimio leaders went to morgues, rented dead bodies which have not been identified by loved ones over prolonged periods, and they pumped them with bullets, piled them up in the streets, so that it can support their narrative of police brutality. Here's the tip. And the information I have is they go to some of the mortuaries, compromise the workers there, people even who died of uh, some illness, people who died maybe out of a, an accident, or other causes, they take photographs of such bodies and blame on police. But we are not in the business of uh, all the time responding to politicians. Ours is to discharge your mandate. 
That is maintaining law and order, protecting life and property. Wana siyasa, sirikazi yo ni kusungumuza na kupiga mdomo. Wapiga mdomo. Sisi ya tuusiki na tutawajibu, lakini kazi ya tutafanya. Now of course if Mr. Kome does not provide any evidence, it will remain to be hearsay. But if Raila double crosses these people and they have some form of insight, believe you me, he's going to be done for. Because the loved ones of those dead people will be involved. Some will say even our boy was not in Mandamano. Last we saw him, Alikuwa Menda Kulima. What is he doing dead in a certain road? So it's going to be a very big blowback. Not just on that, but quite frankly, any other thing that these people decide to expose. Raila cannot afford to betray Martha Karua and the Mlima Kenya remnant that is still in Azimio. They know too much. They know too, too much. And as we all know, knowledge is power. But as usual guys, that's just my opinion. Do drop me your own comments in the comment section below. I'll do my best to read them and to give you a response. Now in the event you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula. Hit the subscribe button, you're gonna be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. Alright guys, adios. Thank you for choosing David Wafula as your primary news platform. We put countless hours in research, recording, and editing. By showing up each and every day to watch our videos, you encourage us to generate more videos for the viewers. We are on a mission to inform, educate, and build a better tomorrow. To our thousands of followers in a world full of presidents, kings, and queens, you are the real gem. Adiós.